Ladies and gentlemen, I say this with all due respect, with love, and with humility pertaining to the anti-work subreddit and perhaps the philosophy or the ideology or some of the goals that the subreddit wanted to achieve. So Fox News, Jesse Waters, and I think Jesse Waters is awesome, had a med- had a, uh, an interview with a gentleman from the anti-work subreddit. Now, this, this gentleman, you know what? Uh, I, I don't know if he understood the optics or the public relations or the media consequences of the interview, but then again, a lot of people don't. It's, you know, natural to be kind of blindsided by an interview on Fox News or MSNBC. I don't blame this gentleman at all, and I wish him only the best, and he should ignore any negative comments from anybody and just focus on whatever it is he, he loves to do. If he wants to be a philosophy teacher, then he should decide on which uh, you know teaching credential or, or, or uh, college he wants to go to to get to where he wants to be, okay? He should just develop a roadmap, a, a strategy, a plan, and follow his dreams. I wish that for him. I think that this discussion is very important, and I think that, and I say this with love and respect for 20-year-olds or 30-year-olds who are in a position right now that perhaps the generation before them were not in, were not in there's a philosophy behind the anti-work viewpoint or movement or reddit that talks about you know fair compensation wages labor rights or laws um what you're worth in society all of these lofty idealistic, philosophical topics. I think that I have, I think that I can help in terms of ideology or philosophy. I think I can help alleviate or address certain issues, some major, major philosophical or existential dilemmas with just this segment or the segment prior to this one. So if you're from that subreddit, and you say, well, he said that Jesse Waters is awesome. I don't want to listen to, to this person. I used to be the biggest Bernie Sanders booster on the internet, according to the Huffington Post. I used to be the unofficial scribe of Sanders' most hardcore voters, according to the Washington Post. Hit subscribe to this channel right now. Hit subscribe to the Stock Market Crash channel below in the pinned comment. I have a segment right after this one on the Stock Market Crash channel. Read my article in The Federalist predicting the stock market crash that we're seeing and the recession we're going to see. So it's going to get worse for the people in the anti-work subreddit. If you think it's bad now, it's actually, we're heading into a recession. Elon Musk predicts that, not only me. So hit subscribe if you want to support my work long-term. My Patreon is below. And uh, if you want to give a super thanks, that's below, right next to the like and share buttons. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm speaking directly to... The good people, the awesome, wonderful people at the subreddit, the anti-work subreddit. Your value in society is not defined by anyone else. It's not defined by, I agree with you that it's not defined by work or employment. Your value in society is how you define or how you see your road or your... um, journey to happiness. Part of happiness is doing something that you love. Now, you might roll your eyes and say, oh, here we go. It's not that easy. Yes, it's very, very difficult, but you have to ignore politics, ignore, you know, left-leaning or right-leaning ideologies because it's all a racket. We have the wealthiest socialists in this country. Bernie Sanders was cheated in a primary that that he was told was fair and neutral, and that happened not only once, but twice, in 2020 as well, with an app that that Madam Secretary's campaign developed. 
We don't have to go into that. The DNC email showed that he was cheated. So, you have Twitch streamers. You have the edgiest, lefty, commie, socialist, communist uh, pundits. They're all wealthy. Okay, the people who are yelling the loudest are either getting a lot of money into their organizations, possibly misusing that money, or getting a lot of money from donations, or getting, like, TYT, $25 million from venture capital funding. Or they're just getting a great deal of money from being on Twitch or YouTube espousing left-leaning ideology. Or Bernie Sanders. Still, you know, he can get a ton of donations, and his message won't change. My point to you is that the people that perhaps you listen to, they're manipulating the system to fit their monetary needs. There is no idealistic leftist on the planet or idealistic conservative. They're all out for money. That's something that you, I th- think you should also remember. When you're talking about these philosophical, esoteric, existential issues, understand that the loudest voices are monetizing that. When you understand that, that's not a, that's not, that shouldn't be, you shouldn't be disillusioned. You should understand what I was trying to say in the beginning of this segment and in the segment prior to this one. They love their work, which is to pontificate, preach, condemn, judge, or try to help society. They're making money from their work. And what I'm saying to you is, whatever it is you love, whatever it is that fulfills you, that's part of what defines you. And you can hopefully, with a plan, strategy, roadmap, turn that into a source of income. Living it with your parents is not a bad thing for a certain time if you're working for a goal. It's not a bad thing. If you don't have to pay rent and you have a family that loves you, that's not a bad thing. Use that time to develop a strategy, a roadmap, look into the future and say, okay, I wanna be here after so many three, four, five, six years of studying or of, you know, of planning or of doing a job I don't like, and on the side, starting a business that I love, or learning a craft that I love, or writing the book that I love. Nobody is going to give you, like when I first started writing, the Daily Beast wrote a hit piece on me, because my articles in the the Huffington Post, the Hill Salon, and other publications were viral, going viral. Okay, Salon went to me. All right, the Huffington Post... All the editors published my work, and I didn't. It wasn't me self-publishing. It was they. They published it on their own. They looked at it. They gave a stamp of approval, and it went viral. Okay, because some journalist didn't like that, he pitched an article to the Daily Beast, and the only reason this journalist pitched the article was to silence me, disparage me, and to hurt me. But that's Life, that's what what takes place. People are going to try to crush you and silence you and suppress you and you're not really owed anything in the world. You have to carve your own niche. And even George Lucas said this, the Hollywood is made to crush dreams. Society has always, from the moment mankind started breathing on earth, The world has always been a harsh place, but if you have a strategy and plan and a roadmap to success or to happiness, because monetary, being a millionaire will not make you happy. And even finding a great job that fulfills you might not necessarily make you completely happy. Happiness is is an an all-encompassing thing, like you have to, there's work, success, family, relationship, you have to be okay with rejection. You're going to be rejected and denied. That could be, 
you know, a man going up to a woman that he finds attractive saying, hey, how you doing? And the woman saying, you know what, I, don't, I want nothing to do with you. Well, that's okay. That's normal. That's just life. That's not a, it's not a problem to risk saying, hello, hey, how's it going? If you get shot down or rejected, then you just move on with life. It's no big deal. But if you strike up that conversation, you guys could get married, have kids, have a great life. That could be the love of your life. And so you take chances knowing that nothing is guaranteed. Same with love. If you fall in love with somebody, that person could cheat on you. But you have to take that chance. You can't, if you don't take risk, you're never going to get any reward. But it's a calculated risk. And you have to put in, whether it's a relationship or work or your future, you have to put in the effort, the time, the thought process to say, okay, I want to be here. This is where I want to be in two or three years. And then develop a roadmap, a strategy. Don't just say, the world stinks. There's a Mel Brooks movie you should watch. Life stinks. Okay, don't just say life stinks and people are unfair and mean because that's, that's never, ever going to change. And you might think in the 1950s people were given this great life. They had to work even harder than people do now in many respects. Okay, in many respects. And I just wish you the best. So this channel is like a political channel, economics, stock market. I talk about a lot of things. From, you know, Alec Baldwin's madness to, you know, he, him accidentally ending someone's life to how we're going to have an upcoming stock market crash. Well, we do, we're we seeing a crash take place in slow motion and a recession to the Durham probe to President Trump, Bernie Sanders, everything going with Biden, everything going on. Things are going to get worse, people. So just for the anti-work, if, if you happen to stumble on this and you're in that anti-work movement, it's going to get worse. Whatever you didn't like about capitalism or society it's going to get a lot worse. We're heading towards a recession. And so it's even going to be more difficult to find work. But if you but if you can say, look, in three years, in two years, in one year, I want to be in this situation, then develop, like I said, a plan, a roadmap legally. A plan, a roadmap, a strategy, and you'll be there. You might have to sacrifice a bit. You might have to do things you don't want to do or work with people you don't want or get paid a wage you don't think is fair. But if you and, and you might have to live with your parents or you might have to and, and that's a good thing if you if you can do that and you don't have to pay rent and you can save up that money and get you know on your feet, that's a, like a beautiful thing. Those are good parents right there. That's a good family. And you should use that to your advantage. Anyway, God bless you. Best of luck. And if there's any if there's any wisdom in this segment or the segment prior to this one that could help you, I hope it does. Uh, hit subscribe to this channel right now. I'll be back in a couple of hours. Thank you.